Go ahead, sir. Good evening and welcome to the Finance and Operations Committee meeting on September 22nd. We are meeting virtually in accordance with the governor's executive order. We will dive right in with the Matt giving us a 2019-20 financial report for the final unaudited summary. Thanks, Lou. We're going to start with the commentary, the word document that's 63020. Keep it brief here. A lot of the detail accounts are in the new financials and the Excel detail and summary. Uh, in this document, we have final unaudited expenditures. We are actually going through the final field work of the audit this week and into next week. I don't anticipate any changes, but I just want to preface with these are unaudited numbers. We have a final uh, expenditure total of 55 million 641 121 which includes the 625 that we had agreed upon to um, fund the self-insurance account and reduce our 2021 budget. In addition, we had uh, a savings of 118,218 beyond that six and a quarter. And that was transferred to the BOE capital reserve, formerly the 1%, now the 2% reserve. And the current balance in that account is almost 160,000 now with that 118 transfer. Okay. The final 1920 savings increased 110,000 compared to the June financial projection, which was 632,000. And this is really attributable to our special ed outplacement facilities. We had anticipated they were going to charge 100% tuition and related services and many of them reduced their final quarterly invoice. And I spoke to some colleagues in other districts and they all experienced this as well. It's certainly a, a benefit to Weathersfield and other towns, but it's not something we had anticipated. So a little more savings on our end and we were able to transfer that into the 2% reserve. Matthew, I have a question on that. Who yes. refused the money? The facility we sent the child to refused the money? No, did I say refuse? No, no one refused the money. We had projected that the facilities, the schools would charge 100% tuition for those students outplaced, but they reduced the amount. I'm sorry, that's what I heard. Yes. I heard refused, okay. Now, do you know in offhand the capital reserve sort of where that's been? Where is this number compared to that? I think this is pretty close to the peak that we've had, somewhere in the, the mid hundreds. And then we spent down related to the uh, facilities study. And also, uh, Mr. Emmett will know what we used some funding for, was it Emerson related projects? No, actually, uh, Matt, it was uh, Hammer. It was a oh. Hammer uh, burner project, as yeah. well as the town utilizing some of the 1% reserve, which is what it was at the time. Uh, to uh, support the replacement of the Stillman roof. That's right. Got it. Thank you. Any other questions on 1920? None. All right, let's move on to 2021. Okay. Next document is, I'm going to start with the word for commentary 92020. For this fiscal year, 2021, we have our approved budget, which is an increase of 1.1 million over the prior year, 2.05%. Expenditures through September 20th are just over 7 million, another uh, encumbrance requisition number of 4.7 million. At this time, we're projecting a savings of $238,490. And of course, it's very early in the school fiscal year. This will certainly change as we go through the next few weeks and months. Some of the items that, um, that are driving this almost $240,000 savings, looking at our salary line, we have lower cost new hires who are replacing teacher resignations and retirements. This, is, this happens every year. And it's fortunate for the district where we can yield these savings and also unpaid FMLA, we're bringing in long-term subs who are, in some cases, 50% of the uh, annual salary of those teachers out on leave. Under benefits, we have unbudgeted expenditures of $10,000 due to unemployment insurance. And this is related to the timing of the state uh, submitting these invoices to the district. This is actually for March and April 
uh, time claimed for these individuals when we started the closure and before we brought back all the employees and paid them their full salary and wages. We just got this invoice in late August and processed it in September, again, for March and April time. So unfortunately, it would have been nice to put it in the prior fiscal year, but for the dollar amount, it's immaterial. I don't see the auditors attempting to move it into 1920. We'll keep it in 2021, but again, it's not something we budgeted for. We also have savings in our benefit line of $5,800, uh, just a small amount related to the HSA contributions on the employer side. Other purchase services, we have unbudgeted expenditures of just over 37,000 due to uh, a bus for an out of district technical school. We had budgeted for three technical schools. This year we're running four routes based on enrollment. And we also have potential savings of 30,000 due to athletic transportation. Obviously, we know our fall season is going to be reduced in the scope of the sports and also the um, length of the season. And then we don't know what's gonna happen with winter and spring. There's a lot of other variables at this time too. Tuition, it's very preliminary to know the full extent of our outplacements and the costs along with the transportation that goes along with that. Magnet school invoices typically do not come until November. So there's going to be a lot of fluctuation over the next few weeks and months, but I'm comfortable at this time with 230, 240, even a little more than that as far as our savings. Questions? Matt, I have a question, it might be from Michael too. Do we have enough subs? You, you were hearing that on the news and um, I'm seeing it online that so many systems are having difficulty getting subs to come in through Kelly subs. They even mentioned the uh, organization. Uh, yes, I can speak to that. Having just uh, interviewed with Fox 61 outside the Stillman building yesterday, um, the sub situation continues to be a challenge for us. Um, we had a total, uh, typically in a, a typical year, we will have a total of seven building subs. These are beyond just the day-to-day -day subs that will pick up a job. Um, they are hired by us. It's a consistent position. They're hired by us through Kelly. And it's a consistent position where the building sub is in the same building every day. And then we'll float out to classrooms if there's a fail to fill, if there's coverage needed for a PPT meeting, anything like that. And these staff members really become part of the staff of a building. With the COVID pandemic, we were looking at being able to expand that so that we had more options and we reduced the amount of movement of subs among buildings. So we added uh, a total of 16 additional positions. Wow. So nine of those positions were permanent for the year and the other seven were for the month of September just to provide uh, schools with more flexibility. Uh, as it turns out, as of yesterday, we still, we filled a total of 10 out of the 23 positions. That's it. Now we're getting the day-to-day -day subs and some of the long-term subs for our longer term leave, such as maternity leave and medical leave. But again, as we get into the colder months and you know what we're talking about, we're talking about if you're sick, stay home. We do expect to see that day-to-day -day sub usage go up. And it's a challenge not only here in Weathersfield, but throughout the entire, you know, greater Hartford area. Um, I think you might have seen uh, the news with Colchester. You know, Colchester had, I believe, three staff members that tested positive. They did not have the sub pool necessary to be able to run. So they had to go to remote learning for the next two weeks. So subs will definitely continue to be a challenge. Other questions? I, you know, I actually had one more. I, you know, driving around town, not as often, but I do see the buses go by with nobody on them. <laughs> there is nobody on these buses. Um, so what are we looking at for the future? I mean, I just, it's, it's like they drive down, they drive back. No, um, we have very few that have double digit riders. We also have eight monitors right now that we're paying through autumn transportation. And those are obviously on those routes that have the higher number of riders, but we don't have every bus with one. They, they had a difficult time even filling eight positions. 
as far as recalculating our roots, I, I don't see that happening, especially the unknown with our calendar for the next few months. I think we have to. Yeah, I, I don't know the answer, Matt, you know, because yeah. you could be filled in another couple months. Um, and we have to have those seats available too for those students who may be getting dropped off and picked up if the parents elect to use the bus or use transportation, we have to have it available. Yeah, that's, it's, it's one of those slippery slopes because I think what will end up happening is if we were to able to go back to a full reopen, I would expect to see the ridership go up a little bit because I think what you tend to get is you'll get parents that are really frustrated. Right now with the cohort model, it's nice. When you drop off in front of a school building, the traffic isn't that bad. Now, Glastonbury, for example, that's doing the full reopening to go to Glastonbury. And I speak, Matt, you're a Glastonbury parent. So you've talked to, to the effect of, you know, the amount of traffic that's in front of these buildings. Because what they did is they encouraged parents not to use transportation. So for us, we didn't, uh, you know, we certainly have offered it. I think it's too premature to look at um, reconfiguring routes, especially knowing that things may change. So... Michael, uh, related to that, um, when do we plan to relook at the model? Is it uh, the end of October in terms of, uh, I know we're getting questions both emailed to us and in the community about when we're going to review that and either keep it the same or make a change. Michael, I have a question though, before we go on. For FOI reasons, these questions are not pertaining to the subject matter of the agenda. So I'm not sure we it's a official meeting and we have minutes and a recording. Just my question. I think it, it's pertaining under the, under the guise of the bus question. Correct, Kenny? Not, not the reopening question. The bus question I could go with. Well, like the reopening, Chuck, does have budget implications, does it not? No, but, I mean, it's all been allocated, assuming we're fully open. I mean, it's fine. I just want to make sure you we're covered wanna, it, it, Chuck, you're the chair. If you want to wait, and I'm happy to ask that question during the board meeting and kind of leave it for now or table it for now, if, if you think that's better. Well, I think Michael's going to have to speak to it at the board meeting anyways, based on the emails we're getting. So yes. it's coming. So Kenny, Kenny, I can address it at uh, the board meeting during communications tonight. Be happy to Sounds do good. Thank you. You're welcome. Michael, I did have a follow-up on the bus question. Have we heard anything back either from the eight monitors or the bus company, people who are on buses that aren't monitored as far as compliance with the mask wearing and. Yeah, good question. Had, yeah, oh, good question. Sorry. We had how many, Matt? One? one? One incident report from a bus driver related to a student who would not comply with the mask on the bus. Again, there, there may have been some other incidents where it was just a quick back and forth between the driver and the student, but there was just one formal write-up. Does it make sense to continue the eight monitors? It, I guess it seems strange that either, I, I would guess we're either full in on monitors on every bus or no monitors and it's up to the bus driver to enforce it as they see it. Yeah, I think Lou, with regard to the monitors, we were gonna put a monitor on each bus so that we could see the monitor assist us in monitoring the social distancing and the mask compliance. At this point in time, not knowing where we're headed, I'd leave it as it is right now. Remember, we're only about half capacity mm -hmm. with our monitors. Uh, and again, I think you know where we are right now compared to where we may be a couple months down the road, I think it's a little premature. Um, we may get to the point where we say, hey, you know what, eight is what we're gonna need, that's it. Let's not look for any more. Um, and you know, we may see some savings there. The other piece I wanna make sure that you guys are aware of in terms of the cost for the monitors, um, they just opened the uh, COVID relief application for that additional grant. That's the information I shared with you that includes funding for transportation as well as PPE. So that would be where we would be looking to uh, allocate the funds for those monitors and not general budget. I will also tell you with regard to that, um, there was a lot of consternation among superintendents about how that money was allocated. Um, as you know, uh, the state made a mistake and we lost a significant amount of funding out of that. 
Um, we're also hoping that the state allows us a little bit of flexibility and leeway um, with regard to being able to move that money around between the PPE as well as the transportation. So um, stay tuned on that one. I'm understanding early October, the state's gonna consider that, but I also understand, Matt, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that the deadline for the application is October 2nd. Am I correct? Right. Nope. Okay. So a little difficult <laughs> to reallocate after you have to submit. So what we'll do is we'll look to submit uh, and then hopefully they'll reopen it and allow us to shift things around. Um, one of the things with regard to transportation, just so you know, we are entertaining the idea of uh, purchasing a new van for the Weathersfield Transition Academy. Uh, we currently have a 2007 Ford Econoline, uh, I think it's a 12 passenger van. From a ventilation standpoint and a room standpoint, it's really kind of um, limited. So we are looking at the potential of being able to purchase out of those COVID relief funds so that our WTA students have a better ability to socially distance and I'm not spending, what's the daily rate for a bus for WTA, Matt? Oh, they're gonna charge mid twos? So $200 a day to, to get a larger bus to socially distance the WTA students. So. Um, We'll get some prices and obviously bring that before you at one of the uh, upcoming uh, finance uh, and operations committee meetings. Any other questions on budgets? Other business? Anyone have other business? Yeah, Matt, can you just uh, let us know an update with regard to uh, auditing procedures, where we are with that, what's the schedule? So the independent audit firm, Bloom Shapiro, they came out and did preliminary work back in the summertime and they're doing final field work this week and next. Most of the time is spent at the town hall. They are coming over for a day or two this week and then the subsequent week as well. Uh, I don't foresee any compliance issues, any testing issues. Like I said, the 1920 numbers are unaudited, but I don't foresee any material adjustments to that. They're testing some state grants, federal grants, um, internal controls, what they do uh, on an annual basis, but we should be in good shape. Thank I, you, just had, I just had one thing. Um, we had talked about it last year. I just wanna make sure it doesn't fall off maybe for a future meeting. And that was a discussion around the uh, pay for play rates and looking at that and just making sure that we can get that onto a future agenda to look at those rates across the board. Yeah, that, that'd that be uh, an excellent idea. And given the situation with football right now, what that's gonna look like, that may be something that we have to look at even this year. Yeah, the other piece with regard to sports and pay to play, just to put the word out there, you know, we're into fall sports, but when you look at winter sports, you have multiple high risk sports, including boys and girls basketball, including ice hockey, and I believe wrestling is, wrestling is on that. And then I also understand that indoor track may be a challenge because of the fact that uh, colleges and universities are not uh, being uh, really open about giving up their space and allowing multiple groups to come in. So um, pay to play is definitely gonna be something we're gonna have to tackle this year. Any other business? Nothing, all right. Um, I guess we will adjourn and see everybody at seven. See you all at seven. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.